would be a really great um, hummingbird um, design here, or attracting hummingbirds. You can see that it has um, the sage, which again, you know, the, the flower that they love. And of course it has the red ones. This just started blooming for us today. All right, on cue. And then I, I put a little wildflower in here, which is Clarkia. Does anybody know what Clarkia looks like? It's a little tall. This is gonna grow very tall, each one of these stems. And it's gonna have a little uh, pink flower on it. And um, if it doesn't attract hummingbirds, which I think it will, um, it will also um, be good for other pollinators like um, our native bees. So um, this would actually be a nice combination, is, like, like I say. And so I selected and a few plants today for um, a couple of different pots here. Um, like I said, we have lots of different selections of different sizes, and, um, and it kind of has to go with the, pot, the plant that you're choosing, too. So today, I think we're going to start with um, this pot here. I think I can get at least three plants in here. <coughs> Make sure that they all have a hole at the bottom. It's very important to have drainage. If you don't have a hole at the bottom, you can either think about drilling a hole uh, with a special drill bit and tender, loving care, <laughs> you know, um, a drill it. If not, um, you can use the pot as um, the French, the first ones that started doing this, is um, just putting a pot inside of a pot. So, you know, like typically you could just put, you know, like a plant in here like this and then just always using it as the, um, the catch basin for the, the water and then just dumping that water from time to time. But that's, um, that's another technique. Today we're actually going to plant this. So, here I tell you, we all need a hole for drainage, but I'm going to cover it with a piece of um, pottery. Now, it's obviously not going to be a sealed down type, but it's just to keep the soil from falling um, out and um, you know losing too much soil, especially when you first get started. After a while, the soil just kind of sets and it, it's just fine. This soil mixture that we use, we sell, it is, um, it has a lot of sand to it. It's a, uh, and some forest mixture and some nutrients. You can, we sell it over in bags um, for you to take home. It's um, just really great filling soil. It works really well for the pots. Some people even use it in the ground so that they can um, mix it with their native soil. But um, it is typically what we, uh, kind of a general mix of what we have in our pots that we grow our plants in already. So um, I always put a little bit of um, soil at the bottom and then I moisten it a little bit just to kind of get that started. And because we're working with hummingbirds, uh, you know, that type of thing, we're going to um, start with um, coral bells today. This one is called Windy. And if you happen to um, look at our website, you know, or you get an email from us, you know, you know that today the featured plant for the weekend is um, a coral bell. And we have many different colors. We have them in red, we have them in white, we have them with small leaves, we have them with large leaves. And they're all uh, good for a shade uh, or a semi-shade garden. And uh, again, this is uh, something the hummingbirds would love to have. So in getting the plant out of a pot, then any planting at all, you know that it's a little um, you have to be a little tender with it. You don't want to break it off. Slide off the pot and then just slide it into your area. Typically, I would be cutting those little leaves off, but I don't bring I didn't bring clippers today, so I'll just deal with the, the little ground ends when I'm making a pot. In the ground it seems like it's okay, but in the pot it works out. So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add this one. No, I'm going to switch. This is another Mimulus. <laughs> this one is, um, this one's called Pumensis. This is one of our native Mimulus plants and um, has um, typically smaller flowers, but in abundance. And they can tolerate um, sunshine, but also some light filtered shade too. So it'll be okay to combine.
spine of the sucker. What was the name again? Min mimulus? It's a mimulus okay. or monkey flower. Okay, so I thought. Right. And it is um, called punensis because of the red brick color. We also have um, these in different colors. This one's the dark red. This one's a hybrid. When they, um, the two native ones are this brick red or a soft um, orange, um, kind of almost yellow. And um, they, those are two, are probably the two hardiest. And then you have um, the hybrid mimulus, and they are um, dark red, there's peach, there's pinks, there's yellows, there's whites. And as we get uh, further into spring, into summer, you'll, we'll come up with um, more and more of them that are blooming. So you'll see that. So what I'm going to add to this, just to change the texture a little bit, is a Dudleya. This one is Lancelotta because the leaves are lance-like shape. And it has a nice bloom. I believe the Dudleya is on your list also. <clears throat> we have Dudleyas in um, what we call live forevers, which like to me look like little fingers. You know, and then there's also the rosette. This one's kind of a rosette, but the um, chalk Dudleyas are more so. And they're gray. So typically you want to put a Dudley a kind of on its side. You don't want the, the water to just sit right down in, in the leaves. You want it to be able to drain out. So we're going to aid that by putting it on its side. tucking the soil around it just to give it some um, everything some stability. Now there's there's plenty of space for all these roots to grow. There was uh, space at the bottom, at least about um, two to three inches. And um, you know I, I put them close together, but then on the sides I have at least an inch or more. And then of course it's going to be fine. Others. You want to water your pots at least um, twice a week because they lose moisture. You'll have to be the test and the judge of that. You just keep um, testing it with your finger you know, for the first few months and then you can um, know how often to water it. I'll do that. But I um, selected, uh, this is emerald carpet. Emerald carpet is um, a manzanita that is low growing. It's more of a ground cover type. And um, I want it to um, cascade eventually over the side of this pot. And, um, and so it will just, you know, fill out. And I think the, the white flower and the red pot, it's going to look really, really nice together. And then I decided I was going to also put in, to complement the red, I was going to put this manulus in there too. This one's a mimulus, it's called dark red. And the manzanita was emerald? Emerald carpet. carpet. Okay. It's a really popular manzanita because it has dark foliage and it has really white um, flowers. And so the contrast is really, really quite nice. I kind of turn that plant around because I'm, you know, I, I always end up creating a front and a back, and um, it was situated wrong there to begin with. Okay, we're just going to fill this up. 